the guys that are not the same or they're injured. And I'll say right here, a lot of his fights that he has had, he has faced injured fighters. Now he wants to face someone. What are the chances of Canelo, of Saul Canelo Alvarez? Saul Canelo Alvarez is on a decline, whether Saul, if he likes it or not, it is the truth. He's had his rise. Now he's starting to depreciate. We can see it. He's getting heavier, getting hefty, real flat-footed. He's not as light as before. So who's going to want to jump on that? Terrence Bud Crawford. Because it looks good. He beats the face of boxing. However, you fought a guy that's on the decline. You know, Terrence Crawford doesn't face, look, I mentioned it, Jose Benavides. He was scared of Jose Benavides. Couldn't even figure him out the first five, six rounds. However, he still did his thing. But I'm going to say it here. Terrence Bud Crawford likes to go after guys that are not the same or they're injured. And I'll say right here, a lot of his fights, that he, the guy had a shot leg, literally. Okay, Errol Spence, he had his, what is it, car- car- uh, his eye. Yes. I don't know how to cataract. say it, the cataract, uh, yeah. cataract eye, okay, situation. But we're talking about Errol Spence that went through a car accident. We're talking about Errol Spence that went through... Um, situations in being in that weight class for so long at 147. The guy that goes up in between fights at 190. Okay. And then we got, who's the third one that I used to mention? Kel Brook, same thing with the eye. You know, and this guy thinks he's this big guy and and the real guy, tough guy. Man, you're not a tough guy. You just fight soft guys that make it seem like they're tough guys just so that you could be the guy. Does Teofimo Lopez have your attention? He says that Terrence Crawford is not a tough guy. He says that Terrence Crawford, he's double downing because he said this before. He says that Terrence Crawford does not choose fighters in their prime, you know, off of sensational performances. And he's looking to basically exploits people and he's fighting them at certain lows in their career. We got to talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Subscribe. Teofimo Lopez did a interview, an exclusive interview with the MMA Hour and Ariel Hawani. And he did not hold back. Teofimo did not pull any punches. And he doubled down on things he said in past interviews regarding Terrence Bud Crawford. Now, I will start off with saying this. What he's saying about Crawford is kind of true. It's not a diss to Crawford, like saying he can't fight. The world knows Terrence Crawford can fight. However, he stayed with top rank and he would just get, you know, some run of the mill guys and or guys on the back half of it. His biggest win is Errol Spence Jr., without a doubt. And as Teofimo is stating, even that win comes with certain asterisks, right? Like Errol Spence had cataract, Errol Spence post-car wreck. And we knew these things going in, and I still pick Errol Spence because personally I hadn't seen him look like he did versus Terrence Crawford. So I thought he had the style to get it done. So I still give Crawford props for beating Errol Spence. But, you know, now it's a situation where we'll never really know, you know, because the accident, in fact, did happen. And that's a reality. When when dealing with these subjects, I noticed the Bud Buddies, particularly, they get mad when the facts are laid out because the facts don't support what they wanted to support but I don't care, don't watch me. Don't ever watch my videos again. But that's not gonna happen and it's never gonna happen because I'm the best in boxing history and it's not even close. So what happens is I say my points, I give my truest thoughts on this microphone and the haters are are seething and mad, but they can't really refute these things. Like for example, Errol went through a car wreck we seen the videotapes of this right and it's not wrong for myself included or other fans to surmise that since 
the effects of said accident had not been shown in two other fights, Danny Garcia and your Dennis Ugas fights, right? That versus Terrence Crawford, you know, we expected the best version of Errol Spence. And for whatever reason, it did not look like that. And looking back on it, you know, in hindsight, of course, you look at the Errol Spence fight, he got his mouthpiece knocked out by Danny Garcia and immediately after that fight he fought a completely different style in your Dennis Ugas and he got his mouthpiece knocked out and a lot of people made a big deal and then Errol Spence being a dog he turned it up on Ugas and was able to get the stoppage so just based on what I said which is all facts I don't have to make up any points in order to be relevant or make sense so why did Errol Spence we watched his whole career i don't remember any point in his career where his mouthpiece was ejected in the middle of the fight errol spence was never beat up bruised and bullied or anything so he had to spit out his mouthpiece or anything so it leads me to believe being an educated man that it was because of the accident right because his teeth were impacted from the accident and he had to get like you know temporary teeth set in couldn't spar yada 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 but the reality is it's because of the accident long story short we can get into like his dental history but i'm not going to do that we know it's because of the accident because he had teeth that were chipped or fractured broke whatever and as a result of that his mouthpiece you know didn't sit well or wasn't form-fitting or whatever the case is so that's residual from errol spence's accident and you can really say that eye damage i mean we had never heard of you yes fighters who have never been in car wrecks can have a detached retina i understand that but notice all these problems happen for errol spence after that we never seen errol spence with eye damage we never seen errol spence with the detached retina or cataracts so you mean to tell me there's a mug shot of errol spence after the wreck and his eye looks bloodshot you know for whatever reason it looks bloodshot maybe he broke a vessel i don't know you know i'm not an ophthalmologist but at the end of the day his eye is clearly bloodshot in the photo in the mug shot you can see it google it right and now all of a sudden he's having eye problems so it's just the reality of the fight. Again, I still give Crawford credit because nobody else made Errol Spence look like that. And Crawford was the first to make him look like that. But I'm not going to take away the facts and not address the elephant in the room. And that's kind of what Teofimo Lopez is saying. He's like, how come every single time there's a, a fight for Crawford, it's usually not at the, the best possible moments of the opponent's career period and that's hard to dispute you i mean are we gonna does anyone listen people get mad i don't know what to tell you people get mad at what's being said but they can't combat what's being said even crawford's team they'll say oh these guys don't know anything about boxing and you know boxing is not like the old days but they won't answer these questions do you mean to tell me that you believe kel brook after two bad eyes versus triple g Hell no, guys, that guys is Max, is Ponch, guys. Right? And then another bad eye versus Errol Spence. And he said he went through a depression. I could pull all this up right now. Kell Brook said he was drinking and probably doing drugs. There's a video of him doing stuff, you know. So he said he slipped into depression. So by the time Terrence Crawford got him with top rank, does anybody believe that this version of Kell Brook was the optimum best version of Kell Brook? Period it doesn't make sense and if you say yes that was the best version of brook then you're a liar period right these are the facts and that's just when you got the guys this is your career you fought the guys when you fought them and that's what it is for example people always compare crawford to floyd mayweather there's no comparison floyd didn't have every single fight or majority of his fights where the person was coming off a bad performance or a car wreck or like Tio is saying 
they got shot in the leg and they had two tune-ups with top rank this is all provable i call it the top rank special so this is jose benavidez and you notice from 2018 he fought terence crawford right 2018 he fought a random Frank Rojas I've never even heard of, a top rank 22 and 0 guy. I guarantee you, if I look at his record now, he got losses, more losses than just Jose Benavidez. What do you say? Boom, 11. Look, I didn't have. Look, he's suspended. <laughs> As I say, Frank Rojas is currently suspended, been knocked out seven times, and he got 11 losses. Only one of them is from Jose Benavidez. That's why I say the top rank special because after benavidez who was with top rank at the time after he fought against which fight was it santana right in 2016 somewhere after that he got shot in the leg he was a 140 pounder and he did not re-emerge in boxing until 2018 and that's where he did two tune-up fights with this matthew strode dude and i guarantee you his 24 and 5 record is worse now let's look boom he got four more losses and he'd been knocked out five times period so this is how top rank brought him back they had a, a 140 pounder who last fought in 2016 and moved him up he moved up to welterweight where he wasn't proven as a welterweight he fought some tune-ups and then immediately after he's fighting crawford you can't say this is the prime Benavidez after being shot in the leg. So I, I get it. A lot of people are mad at Boxer Ego. A lot of people are mad at Teofimo. But these are the realities of who Crawford fought and when they fought him. You know, when he fought John Molina, Broner had already beat John Molina. John Molina got knocked out in the first round versus DeMarco. And then Broner beat DeMarco. In, in my opinion, DeMarco's best performance or Broner's best performance. So that's the reality of Crawford's career. It's just, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, luck of the draw. He's gotten people and they weren't at the best points of their career. Floyd Mayweather's career, you can't compare that to that because Ricky Hatton was undefeated. He had beat Costa Zoo and he had beat uh, Castillo and he was an undefeated fighter when Floyd fought him with great support from the UK that came out to Vegas. When Shane Mosley and Floyd fought, Floyd fought him after Shane Mosley beat the heck out of Antonio Margarito, who was thought to beat him. He beat Cotto after at Cotto's weight of 154 after Cotto had he had avenged his first ever loss to Antonio Margarito. Right? Pacquiao was on a win streak. And there's never really a time where Floyd fought somebody and they were coming off like injuries or subpar performance. Because even the the Errol Spence fight, you know, a lot of people made a big to do about his mouthpiece they said he was badly hurt versus ugas and his mouthpiece was knocked out and things like that he not, he hadn't really shown those type of vulnerabilities before and that's the performance in which crawford fought him so you know it is what it is drop your thoughts in the comment section let me know what you guys think i know you can't refute what's been stated in this video that i do know subscribe